performer hasn't been provided with a script. As a matter of fact, I have been permitted to choose my own words and discuss my own ideas regarding the choice that we face in the next few weeks. I have spent most of my life as a Democrat. I recently have seen fit to follow another course. The defense policy of the United States is based on a simple premise. The United States does not start fights. We will never be an aggressor. As for the peace that we would preserve, I wonder who among us would like to approach the wife or mother whose husband or son has died in South Vietnam and ask them if they think this is a peace that should be maintained indefinitely. There can be no real peace while one American is dying someplace in the world for the rest of us. We're at war with the most dangerous enemy that has ever faced mankind in his long climb from the swamp to the stars. And it's been said if we lose that war and in so doing lose this way of freedom of ours, history will record with the greatest astonishment that those who had the most to lose did the least to prevent its happening. Well, I think it's time we ask ourselves if we still know the freedoms that were intended for us by the founding fathers. Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. You and I must protect and preserve freedom here or it will not be passed on to our children and it will disappear everywhere in the world. If we lose freedom here, there's no place to escape to. This is the last stand on earth. And this idea that government is beholden to the people, that it has no other source of power except the sovereign people, is still the newest and the most unique idea in all the long history of man's relation to man. This is the issue of this election. Whether we believe in our capacity for self-government or whether we abandon the American Revolution and confess that a little intellectual elite in a far distant capital can plan our lives for us better than we can plan them ourselves. Regardless of their sincerity, their humanitarian motives, those who would trade our freedom for security have embarked on this downward course. They knew that governments don't control things. A government can't control the economy without controlling people. And they know when a government sets out to do that, it must use force and coercion to achieve its purpose. We, the people. We, the people, tell the government what to do. It doesn't tell us. We, the people, are the driver. The government is the car. Almost all the world's constitutions are documents in which governments tell the people what their privileges are. Our constitution is a document in which we, the people, tell the government what it is allowed to do. This administration in Washington has betrayed the working men and women of this country. I hope we have once again reminded people that man is not free unless government is limited. There's a clear cause and effect here that is as neat and predictable as a law of physics. As government expands, liberty contracts. A recession is when your neighbor loses his job. A depression is when you lose yours. And recovery is when President of the United States loses his. Someday, when the time comes to deliver the final ultimatum, our surrender will be voluntary because by that time, we will have been weakened from within spiritually, morally, and economically. The martyrs of history were not fools. Where then is the road to peace? Well, it's a simple answer after all. You and I have a rendezvous with destiny. We'll preserve for our children this, the last best hope of man on earth, or we'll sentence them to take the last step into a thousand years of darkness.